Well, the truck's broke down again. Another great start to the day. So today what I'm going to start doing, um, everybody's out of the shop right now because they are having issues with a truck. The tr they have a truck down in basically Princeton down there at Lyle Station. We think that the axle's out of it, but we aren't really sure at the moment. Uh, probably the casing, something in the gears there on the axle, on top of the axle. Can't really show you on this truck that easy, but they're taking a semi down there and they're taking a pickup down there too. They're taking a semi down there, they're going to unhook it hook a different truck onto it and then they're going to pull the semi home with a pickup and then hopefully bring it back here in one piece and then we will probably have to pull it in and start working on it as soon as we get this thing out so i'm going to try and get this thing out probably tomorrow so anyways um i am going to put this in here and then put that on top of this basically this is just what we call an it a two inch nipple uh, i am going to put Whatever you want to call this stuff on it, we call it pipe dope. I'm gonna put pipe dope on it, get it put on there, tighten down and everything, and then put it in the cage, which is back here. And then I'm gonna start putting hoses on, start putting all that stuff on, and hopefully get it ready to go. So then that's what your pipe dope looks like. And then you just kind of take and smear it. Oh, yeah, the stick broke off of it, so gotta improvise I'm using my. Love them in pliers. If you don't have a pair, I recommend going and getting them. Absolutely love my Leathermans. Just gotta get dope all the way around there. On the inside. And I'll put some on there too, or I'll thread tape that. I don't put dope on it, I thread tape that. This is what we call thread tape. It's not even tape, it's not sticky on both sides of it. We just call it thread tape because it's in the same thing as tape. And then you just kind of wrap it around there. Go all the way up the threads. Works the same way as pipe dope, but uh, you can double layer with pipe dope and thread tape. And then you just kind of screw it in. Yeah, it's that simple. So then I'll take and put my valve and stuff on here. I'll thread tape this. Uh, whenever you're thread taping, if you don't know, you always go the opposite direction of the threads. So like if you spin it on this way, you want to thread tape it that way. Makes sense? Okay, good guy. Got that all put together. Now we gotta put these cages on. I'm just gonna slide them up around the trailer and then I'll drag them around on the trailer. So now I got these cages kind of set where I want them. I'm going to stick these down in the cage. Whenever I stick it down in the cage, it'll give me a good idea as how close I want this cage to the outside. Uh, and then we'll tie it down, put bolts in all the way around. As you can see there, there's bolt holes. We'll put bolts in it. And then hopefully start putting hoses together. So whenever I put this one in here, um, I recognize that there's a crack right there. So it's gonna have to get fixed. So I'll have to take this this one back out and redo it. Put a new uh, T in it. So this D right here has to be replaced now. Um, you can kind of see that crack right there. I started to go from uh, using these plastic fittings to metal fittings. 
mainly because metal fittings are a lot less prone to dry rot and crack which is what happened there which is like ones like this and this and this and that have all been replaced last year so they aren't an issue it's just this one so i'm gonna spin this top one off first no actually i'll probably spin this off first and this off first and then i'll spin this off shouldn't be too hard should be pretty quick So I got that off, um, as you can see there, there's a nice little crack in it all the way around. I don't know if you can see down in there. It's the same thing on this side too. Crack right there about where my finger is. All the way around, so this is the one we're gonna use to fix it. Got it taped up, screw it on now. Take this and hold the thing. So I'm changing the oil or the fuel filter on my truck now. Just we're, we're working on changing the oil filter and stuff. I have a fast 165, so therefore I'm just going to put this on. This is a fuel filter delete. Uh, just kind of takes care of some of the fuel flow and stuff like that. As far as I've already got two filters on the fast, so therefore I don't need uh, this filter anymore. So I can just go ahead and put this on pretty simple and easy I'm just gonna go ahead and dump some of that in there I'll use my finger to spread it around the um, top of the seal here to get that seal wet so it doesn't break whenever it's getting screwed back on as you can probably see up in there the uh, there's a different filter on there now it's not really a filter it's more or less just a bowl so then you can delete that fuel filter because there's two fuel filters on my fast. There's a water separator and there's also a uh, um, an actual filter piece to it. So that allowed me to delete that fuel, delete this fuel filter up here. And then that way I can get more flow from my fuel and stuff like that. And then I'm also got, I'm also working on changing my oil and my engine. So one of the things that I do that not everybody may do is I usually dump a little bit of oil through it first, kind of clean out the insides of the engine. We're also to fill this jug all the way through full, so just kind of use a little bit of oil to flush out the engine, and then I'll put some other stuff, put some additives in it and some other stuff, and then we'll fill it up and put the filter on and everything, and it'll be good to go. Ross is here also. Hi guys. Um, one thing that I do is I usually put a little bit of oil in the filter, wrap it around, or you take your finger and you rub oil around the filter O-ring to keep it from breaking. And then these filters, you can get them basically anywhere. You can go in there and tell them your car, your year, everything, and then they will get you a filter for it. So since this filter sits in my truck horizontally, I can't put, uh, I can't fill all the way full, like what some people might do. If it sits vertically, you can put it in 
with uh, oil full in it. That's what we usually do on these tractors. You can turn around here, you can see these oil filters on these tractors. They sit vertically. So then you can, so then you can put uh, oil in them and fuel in them before you turn them on, but not on these pickups at least. Most of these Chevy trucks are all horizontal. So another thing that I normally put in is Lucas Oil, oil stabilizer. Um, I put it in my truck mainly because I have way too many miles on this truck for being a 2015. It has over around 180,000 miles because I drive it literally everywhere that you can imagine. <laughs> Ross, what are you doing? I don't know if I gotta mess with you a little bit. Making your uh, intro into the video, huh? Yes, it could be the intro. <laughs> but then after this, we'll put uh, normal motor oil in it. Uh, we run 10W40. I think that's what it is, at least. No, 15W40. 15W40 in our trucks. All of our trucks' tractors are 15W40. Uh, all the diesels. All the diesels, yeah. That's 15 weight, right? 15 weight. No, W means winter. Winter. Yeah. You, never, you didn't know that? So it's 40 weight. No, I never really studied oil, honestly. So it's a 40 weight oil. Or if you look at this stuff, this is straight petroleum. That's why it's so like stringy. That's what the viscosity is. Viscosity is 40 or 15. No, like like in the the 15 W40, the viscosity of the oil in the winter time is 15, and then like when it's warm, it's, it's 40, I do believe. I may be wrong, but. Go ahead, trash can. I do believe it's, that's how it is. Comment down below if I'm wrong. Yeah, comment down below and tell Ross he's wrong. They'd probably get if I do that anyway. Just cause. This truck takes eight quarts of oil. That was one quart, so that means we gotta put seven quarts in it now. Uh, the LMLs have the smaller motor. It's got the same amount of horse, or it's got more horsepower, if anything. But it's got uh, the thing that makes it to where it doesn't take less oil is mainly because of the turbo, vanes, all kinds of different things. Ross's takes 12 quarts of oil, whereas mine takes eight. Ross was just asking about that. It's a little bit different varying on the truck, vehicle, gear, model, vehicle, well, everything plus varies. The, plus yours is also a Chevy and mine's a GMC, but they're made well, by the same, well, same, they're 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 made same, by the same company. company but same company, they got better. the same motor in them. Huh? They got the exact same motor in them. You didn't hear what I said, did you? No, what did you say? <laughs> mine's better. So we still aren't on the dipstick yet, so probably dump a little bit more oil in it. And Check again. You want to go up there and start it? Hold on a second. So I'm going to have one of my friends uh, start my truck up here. We're going to check the oil after it runs for a minute. I got it up on the dipstick a little bit. You put the brand mold back in? Yep. Uh, fuel. Forgot to prime the fuel filter, so I gotta prime the fuel filter real quick. So I just primed the fuel filter, it's down here. Um, there's a little primer down here. You push the button, you gotta turn the valve, push the button a little bit more, turn the valve. A couple other things, and now we're gonna start it up again. And hopefully it'll stay running this time. Uh, this is kind of a normal thing whenever you change your fuel filter. <laughs> Guess it's not gonna want to do it again. Yeah. 
So we decided that uh, this was the culprit as to why we wasn't starting. This is, we was trying to replace the uh, old oil filter with, the, or the old fuel filter with this new fuel filter, which is basically a fuel filter delete. I decided that that's not a good idea because we was not able to pull the right amount of fuel pressure to run with this. So we ended up having to take it off and replace it with the actual fuel filter. Um, we are, we got it running now. The oil looks good. Everything looks good. So if I check the oil again, call it good for the night and then go home. Yep, we're good on oil, so which means we can put the air tube back on for the fuel filter, or for where I was priming the fuel filter, we can put this back on. This is basically what your intake is into your engine for air. Runs around into your turbo. Just stick it back on, and then you gotta use a screwdriver to tighten it back up. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Remember to like and subscribe, leave a comment down below. If you got any questions, comments, concerns, follow the Farm Instagram Facebook page, and I guess we'll see you guys in the next one.